what if I wanted to track that MIDI performance from the MPC software over into Logic? And what about also tracking the audio? Because otherwise, this is a cool workflow and it's, it's interesting, but it's also clunky because now if I save my MPC session, I also need to save my Logic session probably in the same folder by the same name. And then every time I open up the MPC session, I need to open up the logic session and that can get, uh, that's a lot. So at this point I could just transfer all of that MIDI over into logic and the audio if I want to. So I'll show you how to set that up. And we're going to also use this IAC driver to synchronize the two devices. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up logic first to slave to the MPC software. And so I'm going to go back into my project settings, option P. Uh, this time I'm going to go under MIDI and um, no, I'm going to go under synchronization. I'm sorry. I'm going to go into synchronization and under synchronization, I want to change the sync mode from internal to MTC for MIDI time code. Now logic does not slave to MIDI clock. And there's a difference between MIDI clock and MIDI time code. MIDI clock sends tempo information, whereas MIDI time code does not send tempo information. MIDI time code is the MIDI equivalent to simply time code. And so it's running on a real 24 hour clock. It just sends time information. So because of that, if you do this and you're going to slave logic to anything, uh, using MIDI time code, you need to make sure that the tempo is the same in whatever you're slaving from and also in Logic. In this case, I've already set Logic up to the same tempo because of the arpeggiation thing. So both Logic and the MPC are set to 88 beats per minute. But you should also take note of the frame rate here because we have to set that to the same thing in the MPC software and also take note of this where it says bar position. So bar one is tied to simply time code one hour. That's important. I'm also going to select auto enable external sync. Notice when I set the sync mode to MTC that the playhead turned light blue. If I set it back to internal, you see it goes back to just white. So I'm going to set it to MIDI time code. And now I just need to go over to the MPC software and do some preference settings here. So command comma, sync. And here I am going to say send MIDI time code, not MIDI clock. Remember logic doesn't slave to MIDI clock. I'm gonna use MIDI time code. And then where it says two, I want MIDI time code to go to the IAC driver bus one. The frame rate is set to 25, which is the same thing that it is in logic but look at the start time. So this is the simply time here in the MPC. I need to set this to one hour. So I'm just gonna click on this, this zero and drag up for one. Then I'm gonna say, okay. So now if I start the MPC, the Logic software should start also. But I'm gonna tell you something about arpeggiated sounds and logic in syncing via MIDI time code. It's probably going to throw this out of sync because the arpeggiation is using tempo and it has to wait for the MPC to send tempo information and then get over there and then it just it just all falls out of whack. But let's try it anyway. Just like I thought. So you see that the drums are playing, but the synth, the strings are completely like a half a bar late. So just to show you this workflow, I'm going to change, I'm going to mute this string sound and I'm going to change this string sound to a, uh, just a piano because it all has to do with the arpeggiation. So I'm going to go into piano, choose a Yamaha grand piano and make sure went to all. So I'm going to make sure it's listening to MIDI channel two. And then I'm going to arm both of these tracks. And 
what I like to do to try to prevent that lag, which, which is trying to catch up with MIDI time code is I like to create a, uh, empty track, an empty sequence rather, um, that's one bar long that will allow it time to catch up and be on time when we jump into the sequence that's actually playing. So I'm going to go here and create a new sequence. And on this sequence, I'll leave it at two bars. You can make it one bar, but I'll leave it at two bars. And let's see here. This should work. I'm going to start playback. And then change this to sequence one. So now you see they are timed up and you see the playhead running in logic and the NPC at the same time is, is controlling it. And just so you can see that the timing is the same, uh, if you watch, let's go back to bar one here, over here. If you watch the bars, I'm trying to set them under each other so you can kind of see them keep up with each other. Okay, so now the whole purpose in doing that is so I could record the MIDI over, but I could also record the audio at the same time. So the tracks are really ready to record the MIDI. What I'm going to do is create uh, two audio tracks. So let's select this and uh, command option A is a shortcut for new audio track. And on this audio track, I am going to set the input to a bus. I'm going to choose bus 13 because it's the first one open. And on the next track, I'm going to set that input to bus 14. And I am going to set the output for this track to bus 14. I'm going to go here to the output bus 14, and I'm going to set the output for the drum track to bus 13. Let's name this uh, drums. And I'm going to call this one piano. And uh, let's see, I'll input monitor here so I can hear it. That won't matter once I start recording. What's important here is that even though I'm recording on these tracks, I need to make sure that these two tracks up here are armed also because the NPC software is still sending MIDI to these two tracks. And so they both have to be armed. And I've noticed in Logic is, is kind of finicky. So I've I figured out that I have to select both tracks. So I'm going to select this one, hold shift and select this one. And they should be ready to be armed. This is ready to record. And so what should happen is when I start playback on the NPC, it should start playback here. I'm going to uh, control click and customize my toolbar and put my sync button here. And if I hit my sync button, that just tells Logic to wait for MIDI time code to come. Now I'm going to go back into my NPC software. I'm going to start with that empty sequence of two bars. Oh, in Logic, I need to start record. And because it's not going to do anything because it's waiting for the MIDI time code to come in. And go back here, start playback.
And so just like that, here in Logic, I have the MIDI recorded and I have the audio. Let me unarm these, mute these, and let's listen to the audio. And the MIDI up here is also the MIDI. Let's uh, mute these regions. Control M. Unmute these. I'm muting these because it's going to play back through these. I think. I'm not getting my drum here. Let's change the output back to stereo output and change the output on this one. Stereo output. Now let's play it and see what happens. So there you have it. A different workflow using the MPC software and Logic Pro as a sound module. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below and I'll be sure to respond. If you liked the video, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And of course, click on the bell so you can be notified of new content when it's posted. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.